All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you guys another video. So I hope you all are having a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the reward center stake pool feature of the Daedalus wallet for Cardano. Uh, if you guys are interested in this type of content, I'm gonna be focusing more on uh, tutorials and informative videos for you guys. I feel like a lot of people in the community have you know, spoken about how they want more information regarding the testnet and how to get the most out of staking and delegating. So I'm here to bring that information to you guys. If you do enjoy this type of video, please be sure to drop a like for me. It does support the channel and it lets me know that you enjoyed it. And again, if you're new, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. I, I welcome you guys to join the community and join the channel. Here in Kaizen Crypto, we talk about everything related to crypto news, investing, uh, relevant information, how-to, tutorials, all of that here in this channel. And if you guys want to get notified, click that little notification bell also so you can stay up to date and you know exactly when I post a new video. So what we're looking at here, I have the incentivized testnet version of the Daedalus wallet pulled up on my computer. And once you've gone through the process of restoring your recovery phrase for your wallet, and you've created your rewards wallet and you've written down the recovery phrase for that and you've stored both of those in a safe place now you are ready to start delegating so this is where the fun really kind of takes off with the incentivized testnet now what we see here i've got this little tab opened up so here's where we find the wallets and this right here is the delegation center so when you click on this tab right here you've got a few options you've got the delegation center You've got this tab where it shows stake pools, which is where we're at currently, and you can see the rewards that you've earned by clicking on the rewards tab. In this video, we're just gonna be taking a look at the stake pools page. Um, it's quite a bit to take in, so I wanted to go over with you what exactly it is that we're looking at here when you have this pulled up on your screen. Now, with your Roy, it's gonna be a little bit different. This video is gonna focus on Daedalus. Um, in the future, I am planning on putting up a video for your Roy, or if, uh, if there is a video that's currently out there, please be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you're able to leave a link for the community, that would be awesome. So I greatly appreciate that. But what I have for you guys, taking a look at Daedalus, this is gonna be a list of all the available stake pools. And it's insane to see that we're on the test net, right? We're almost three weeks in and we are at almost 587 stake pools. I know that Charles Hoskinson was saying that they're gonna aim for about a thousand stake pools and I think that they're gonna blow that out of the water. I mean, just from the amount of participation that we see right now, it's amazing to see how decentralized this network is truly gonna become. But what I wanted to show you here, so all these different tiles, um, what all of it means is these are a list of all the available stake pools on the incentivized testnet. Now these are going to be color coded and they are um, organized according to their reliability, which is what we see here. This is green, right? They're color coded. And as we go down, it starts to go yellow. And as we go down further, it goes red. Now what this means essentially is the performance of the stake pool. Now guys, bear in mind that this is the test net. A lot of uh, stake pools have had issues with the network forking and all sorts of different things as far as uptime. Many of these network servers uh, have maintained a reliable uptime. It's just that based on the, the blockchain being on a test net right now, uh, they they have not had the best results in terms of metrics but uh, I would just take this into consideration guys right now the uptime for a lot of these stake pools is going to be subjective you know I know uh, Philippe and Rick uh, they were talking about on the Cardano Effect podcast how there are still some quirks still some bugs being worked out right now there are there are some issues right now with some stake pools uh, operating on a fork chain and there's a whole bunch of things still going on, but this is again why we're on a test net. And once this is rolled over into the main net, this is gonna be a little bit more seamless and you're gonna be able to see the status of these stake pools organized based on the reliability, which is how they're currently categorized. Um, and it's gonna be a little bit more intuitive once it's on the main net. Uh, but anyway, taking a look at some of these stake pools here, 
Um, you guys can see that there is a whole bunch of different stake pools. You've got the ticker and you've got the stake pool number. Now these numbers are organized according to epochs. So depending on how reliable the stake pool is and how many blocks that they have been able to mine uh, from the ones that have been assigned for them to mine, um, you know that's how it's going to be categorized. Now, if we go ahead and click on one of these, uh, this is just totally random. I'm not picking on this stake, stake pool, Blue Cheese Steakhouse. Uh, but I just wanted to show you some of the things that we can take a look at here when you click on the actual tile. So you see the name of the stake pool, you see the ticker, and you have a link to the website if they do have a website. It's gonna show you the rank, the controlled stake, so how much pledged ADA is controlled by that particular stake pool. The profit margin. Now, guys, when I first started with this, I was thinking that the profit margin was money that I was gonna be making. That is not the case. If you are delegating your ADA, profit margin is the metrics of that particular stake pool. So let's say, for instance, this particular stake pool is awarded 100 ADA at the end of the epoch for being online and mining blocks. Out of those 100 ADA, the profit margin for this stake pool is 1% this stake pool will claim one ADA after that epoch as uh, a way to pay for its expenses and whatever uh, business needs that this particular stake pool has. So that one ADA is what that 1% is. Now that's just to put it in relative terms, it depends on the number of ADA that is actually awarded to the stake pool. It's gonna be 1% of that goes to the stake pool operator. Cost per epoch, this is something that the stake pool can charge. It's almost like a flat fee um, for being online and being able to delegate your stake to that pool. Many stake pools right now, because we are in the test net, are not currently charging a, a fee or a cost per epoch. And one thing I would like to point out, I did notice here that of all these stake pools that are community driven, you know, there's a zero ADA cost per epoch. But I wanted to take a look at something like IOHK. So let me see if I can find IOHK. As you guys can see, it's incredible the amount of options that you have. So don't be overwhelmed. I know it's quite a bit to take in. Uh, I'm looking for IOHK. Let me take a look here because I want to show you the difference of IOHK's uh, cost per epoch and something like that of, oh, here we go, something like that of somebody from the community. If we take a look here, the profit margin for the IOHK stake pool is 10%. All right, now don't be like me thinking that 10% is what you will earn. I had to learn just from trial and error and doing my research, that 10% is actually what this stake pool is going to earn after the end of each epoch. Uh, and the cost per epoch, this is gonna be the flat fee that they charge uh, from your rewards for maintaining the network and being online, 258 ADA. So it's quite a bit, it's quite a bit uh, to stake for IOHK. Uh, with IOHK or to delegate with them, which is why the returns on investment when you stake with IOHK are significantly lower than if you were to stake with something like uh, one of these other stake pools, right? You've got tons of options, but I just wanted to show you that, something to keep an eye on. Performance, this is going to be a little bit more accurate once the network is rolled to the mainnet, but performance essentially gives you a percentage of blocks produced out of blocks that have been elected to that particular uh, stake pool. You know, if there's a, if that stake pool is declared slot leader and if they are not online, that is going to hurt their performance. Uh, and produce blocks is going to show you the number of blocks produced in that given epoch. So that's a couple things that I wanted to show you guys here. If you decide that you do want to delegate to this certain stake pool, you can simply click on delegate to this pool. The transaction fee for doing so in the incentivized testnet is 0.8 ADA. So it's incredibly cheap to move your money around and to delegate with different stake pools. Please be aware also, I'm sure you guys um, have had experience with this, but you guys know that when you delegate to a stake pool, you are not sending your ADA. What you're doing is you are giving the opportunity 
to the stake pool uh, to maintain the network on your behalf. You know, if you're not able to run a node or run a server, you're able to delegate it to somebody who is able to maintain a, a decent uptime to help validate transactions and support the network. So that's what I have for you guys here in this video. I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview, kind of what this is. I know it's a big mess and it can be a bit overwhelming, especially if you're a little bit unsure about what all this means. So hopefully that clarifies a little bit. And uh, again, I hope you guys did find some value and if you enjoyed it, please be sure to drop a like for me. Until the next video, you guys, I will see you all in the next one. Take care.